Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode where we'll be talking to Paula Courtney, and she's the president at Verde Group. So welcome, Paula. How are you doing? I'm excellent. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me. Excited to be here. The pleasure is all mine. The pleasure is all mine. And Paula, I love these hero conversations. I just, first of all, I just love stories and getting to know people. So start us off. What's your story? What's my story? Well, uh, right now I am president and CEO of the Verde Group. We are a market research consultancy that really helps organizations grow their revenue by focusing on improving and managing their customer experience. So that's what I do. And I've been doing it for 23 years. So very long time. And I have an amazing team. I feel very privileged. A lot of strong women and men who uh, work at the Verde Group helping our clients uh, make more money, I guess. I love it. So where'd you go to school at? So I am Canadian. So I was born in Toronto and I went to uh, University of Toronto, which is uh, a uh, one of the you know best universities in the country. So I'm very lucky that I happened to live in Toronto and I could go there. And I am a first generation immigrant. My family is from Portugal, so I'm Portuguese. And I... Um, Grew up with very traditional values, uh, studied psychology at uh, university, and it still is a passion of mine because everything that we do today at the Verde Group is all about human behavior and understanding what drives customers to buy more, spend more. And uh, there's so much of there's so much psychology and actually the work that we do. So uh, I feel lucky that a lot of people don't have that opportunity to you know, whatever your undergrad was that you actually use it, you know, 25 years later. And I, I feel fortunate that, you know what, I'm really happy that uh, I studied what I studied. And of course, statistics is a big part of psychology and it's all that we do as well at the Verde Group. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit about me. That is awesome. So University of Toronto, I'm trying to remember, is that, I think that's where Jordan Peterson went or he taught at, or he, he went there, but anyway. That's another topic. So it, 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 it resonated <laughs> when you said University of Toronto, but well, that is great. That is great. And I'm so excited to have you here. And I'm curious from you. So you're, you're leading this group. Obviously you, you, you all are doing wonderful things for industry. You know, what, what's a common myth out there about women industry specific that I'm going to give you the platform. You get to, you get to debunk it right now. So is, is there anything that jumps out that you'd like to uh, share with us? I, you know, it's, th I think there's so many and I'm going to speak personally about okay. one. Uh, and that is, so first of all, I'm an entrepreneur. I started my business. And one of the things that I think is a big myth out there is that women are not natural risk takers. Mm. Uh, so I, I, you know, I did a little research and, and I found that it is remarkable how many businesses are actually started by women. So there is a tremendous growth in businesses, small businesses in particular, that are led by female uh, entrepreneurs. So, so I think that is a myth. I think women can be risk takers and are risk takers because to be an entrepreneur and to be a successful one, I think you have to put it all on the line. And I, I took big risks. You know, I was, when I started my company, I was recently divorced. I had a toddler in tow and I took on a lot of personal debt and I could have lost everything. And I would have been living in the basement of my parents' home uh, had that gone sideways. But I, I knew that if I wanted, I, I believed in myself, I believed I could do it. And I, I risked everything. And when people say to me today, when I interview people and they tell me that they're entrepreneurial, I always question them on that and say, what does being an entrepreneur mean to you? And a lot of people think, oh, you know, I have great ideas. And it's like, no, no, no. Entrepreneurialism for me is risk taking, is being so passionate about your idea that you will risk everything to get it and to be you know, um, centrally focused. So I think that's, that's a big myth for sure that I'd love to debunk. I think there are a lot of incredible risk takers out there. I'd like to consider myself as one massive risk taker for sure. And I think the second one, Chris, is 
that women don't support other women in business. Mm. And I think that's a big myth. Um, I have seen so many other heroic women uh, achieve greatness because they've had wonderful female mentors. So I, I would like to think that I'm one of those people that like to mentor my female staff who are incredible. And I'm so, you know, privileged to work with such an incredibly talented group of women. Um, and I, I have witnessed more than not that women really do support other women. I mean, there are those horror stories that you hear about in corporate America, but I think those are rare. I think that we all need to help each other. What was it, Madeleine Albright, who had this funny line that she said, I think it was like over 25 years ago, that there's a special place in hell for women who don't help each other. <laughs> you know, it's, she did say that. She's known for uh, for that expression. But anyways, it's it's true. So I think that is a second myth I'd like to debunk for sure. I think they're both wonderful myths that you debunked right there. And I didn't realize that you, the, the entrepreneurial journey, that's amazing. I mean, that's awesome. So you, you've done that. So maybe give some advice for the, the listener out there. And, and speak to the female listeners, if you don't mind, Paula, maybe it's, and they're, they're, they have an entrepreneurial drive and they want to get started. Where do they go? What, what are you telling them? I think the, the first is, you know, work with the assets that you have and the single most important asset for any woman and man. Uh, so it's, this is humans, in my opinion, it doesn't matter what your gender is, is confidence. Confidence truly is the most important muscle in your body. It's something that you can train. You need to nurture it, protect it, grow it. Confidence is everything. Without it, your ability to succeed will always be compromised or be at risk. And a lot of people say, okay, I get it, but how do I nurture confidence? How do I get it if I don't have it? Because I've you know, spoken at some leadership conferences, female leadership conferences, and women come up to me afterwards and say, it's great. I totally get the confidence thing. I wish I had more of it. How do I get more confidence? And practicing gratitude is one of the best ways to build your confidence. Being grateful for other people and, and appreciating other people's strengths invites them to appreciate your strengths. And all of a sudden, before you know it, what you give out, you get back tenfold. And that's one of the best ways to build confidence is to write down every single day the three or four things that you are most grateful for. And they could be stupid things. Like, I'm so grateful that it's not raining today and I just did my hair. Like, I don't know what right, that is, but right. you know, <clears throat> being grateful for small things is so important to building mm -hmm. confidence. And you don't even know you're building confidence until you continuously practice gratitude. So I believe that that is foundational for sure. Great advice. Great advice. And I, I even heard the other day too, Paula, maybe you can you know, jump on this as well. When, when you said confidence, and building that confidence up, somebody actually, they told this to me yesterday and perhaps competence, you know, the more competent you become, the more confidence you'll be, you, that you'll be, that you'll have presence in a room, presence in, in a conversation because you're, that, that as your competence goes up, so does your confidence. So I don't know if that resonates as well, but I think it's a great point that you, that you provided there for the listeners. You know, I actually think the opposite. I know this is okay. going to sound crazy, but I actually think, you know, there's this expression that says fake it till you make it. And I totally disagree mm -hmm. with that 100%. Never fake it. Um, you need to absolutely build your confidence. Building confidence is really key, even if you don't have the confidence mm. yet. But if you have the confidence, your competence catches up to it. It is far more important to have more confidence than competence because if you trust in mm -hmm. yourself, you will eventually find the right skills, the right people to help build the necessary competence to match up to your confidence. And I'm not saying be cocky right, right. and arrogant and you know be full of hot air, absolutely not. But having confidence allows you to take chances allows you to work outside your comfort zone, to work in spaces where you don't have the confidence, but the confidence will get you there. So if you 
always wait to have the competence before you do something, you don't take chances, you don't take risks, and you never operate outside of that comfort bubble. And uh, I think that playing outside that comfort bubble is how you grow and you build more confidence, more competence, sorry. So confidence is first, build that, build that first. Don't wait to have all the skills and all the knowledge and all the experience that you will never have enough. You will never have enough knowledge. You will never have enough competence. You will never have the right skills or all the skills. Life is a continuous learning journey. But if your confidence is always strong in there, then those things don't matter. They will eventually catch up. Right. Great points. Great points, Paula. Well, thank you for, for sharing that as well. And I'm curious from your stake, from your take as well on helping people. You just gave some great advice. How about mentorship? And because I love to get the people, particularly entrepreneurs like yourself, your take on that. How important is mentorship? Should we be seeking mentors in our life? Should we try to find people to mentor? Just what does that look like for you? All of, absolutely. Mentors are so important. I, I wouldn't have been where I am had I not had mentors and I mm. seek them out. So I think being a good networker, like reaching out and networking is a really great way to find someone that you can connect with that could mentor you. Mentors are incredibly important because they typically, uh, have, you know, usually they'll have a vested interest in you and they are not your boss necessarily. I don't agree with your boss being your mentor. So it's got to be someone that sits outside of the company that you work for, who can guide you, who can see through, um, you know, current challenges that you're facing, that they're not biased by you know, the employer that you happen to share. So finding mentors outside of your current employment situation is, is really critical, uh, whether it's an education, uh, you know, professor, a teacher, someone who you look up to because they've accomplished things that, that inspire you. Those are all, you know, great candidates for mentors, but I think mentorship is, is critical. And if, and you know what, there's always someone that, can be a mentor to you. And there's always someone that you could mentor. So giving back is just as important. Finding someone that you can coach uh, also helps build your confidence too. We're always looking to build that muscle, that confidence muscle. So that's another great way to build it is by, you know, inspiring someone else by coaching them because everyone has coachable moments for sure. Right. And I tell you, I've asked that question to every hero, Paula, and you're the first time I've ever someone say, you know, look outside your organization. Cause I think naturally as people, we want to look inside our company and we want to try to find mentors. And I think there's, there probably is a place for that to try to, as you build your career, but great advice for going outside of your company and trying to find those mentors, because they're going to really give you that, that unbiased, unfiltered, you know, opinion and, and, and guidance and direction. So I, I think that was wonderful. Perfect. I'm glad. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So I'm, I'm curious, sir, you're, you're president CEO of the Verde group. When are you the happiest? When do you feel that moment of joy? What are you doing in those moments? Uh, so it's, uh, I am happiest when my team feels successful and there are a lot of small victories that we have every day, whether it's delivering a report that our clients, you know, find incredibly useful, very actionable, whether it's facilitating a leadership meeting that my team will facilitate. So to me, when my team feels success, when they feel inspired in the work that they do, that makes me the happiest. And ultimately, of course, when my customers are really happy and they feel that we as an organization have made a difference to their company, that they are taking decisions that are different because of the work that we've done with them, that makes me the happiest. It's what motivates me. It's what drives me. So there's a lot of things that make me happy. I'm pretty much a happy person. I'm, I'm picking up on that. I feel like that's just your personality. You always, you have a smile. You've been smiling the whole time we've been recording. This it's just great. Awesome, awesome. So I'm curious. We're gonna take a. We're gonna we're gonna get off of the career path. We're gonna talk about you outside of Verde Group for a little bit because we love for Eco Ask Why listeners on the Hero episodes to to get to know you as a person. You know, outside of your career. So 
do you have any hobbies anything you enjoy doing for fun so i would say COVID has uh forced me to do a lot of cooking uh because you know we're going out to restaurants very often and it's become this incredible passion of mine of not just cooking a meal to consume but really gourmet cooking and looking up recipes and studying you know uh chefs and just cooking shows cooking apps um experimenting and i will host small intimate gatherings and i will do three four course meals and i love the you know wine pairing and i love to decorate my food and make it look pretty on the plate so it's become a real passion of mine and i'm sort of establishing a bit of a reputation among my friends that right. is paula cooking you know so uh, i i'd say that yeah i love love to cook and uh it's it's become a passion. So I love to be in the kitchen and make something, even if it's just for me. Um, so yeah. What's your, what's your favorite dish that you've learned? Oh my God. Well, yesterday I had a friend over and I cooked this salmon. So I'm also addicted to my new air fryer, which I think right. everyone should own. <laughs> you know? And I cooked this salmon in the air fryer and I made this beautiful parsley and garlic sauce that went on the salmon and it was so easy and so simple so i love to cook simple food so first of all i'm mediterranean i'm portuguese and we have this you know this rule mm. it's like less is more so olive oil sea salt and pepper are my favorite ingredients and if all your food has just the you know if all you ever use to cook are those three ingredients then i think you can make anything amazing um so so yeah, so anything with olive oil, salt, and pepper, I go. think that's all you need. <laughs> very so, good, very yeah. good. Now we we also love on on the hero episodes, Paul, to, to learn about family. So anything you'd like to share with the, with our listeners about your family? Yeah, so a little bit of tragedy. I'm a widow. Um, I lost my husband uh, four and a half years ago, and that was very hard. Uh, I have a 24 year old daughter who is uh, very happy and successful in advertising. She, um, yeah, so she runs uh, some large accounts. She does all the social media strategy for uh, two global brands. And she's, uh, yeah, so it's just me and her. <laughs> okay, now she, is she in the area? No, my daughter lives in Montreal, Quebec. Um, so yeah, she went to school at McGill, which is another amazing university in Canada and stayed there and <laughs> loves it. So yeah. Okay. Very good. Sounds like an exciting career she has in front of her. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So how about resources that you enjoy consuming? It could be professional, uh, personal stuff, but I'm thinking podcasts, YouTube channels, you know, books, just personal things that you like to consume that you like to share with others right now. Absolutely. So, you know, I wasn't, it's funny because during the pandemic, I took my dogs out for many walks during the day because I wasn't commuting anymore, driving downtown to my office. So I was listening to podcast after podcast. And some of the two favorite ones that I have is The Daily, which is the New York Times podcast, which I think is uh, fantastic. And another one is called Stuff You Should Know which is a fabulous podcast about science or any question in the universe. Like why do some stars twinkle and what's the, you know, what are geysers um, and, you know, how to just crazy questions that they just unpack. And it's, it makes for great conversation at a cocktail party, which of course no one was doing during the pandemic, but loved stuff uh, you should know in the daily. And of course, I also live almost 50% of my time in Manhattan. So I commute between Toronto and New York. So everything New York is a passion of mine. So New York Times uh, cooking is a great uh, app. So I know a lot of their uh, contributors and follow a lot of like Mark Bittman on New York Times uh, cooking is phenomenal. Like all his recipes are amazing. So I highly encourage that. And um, and just the New York Times, like I'm addicted. I read it every day. So those are my my things. And then books. I love 
female authors. I'm reading Gabriela Garcia, who's um, writing of Women in Salt, which is a phenomenal story on immigrants, Cuban immigrants in this instance. And, you know, I'm the daughter of an immigrant family. And so I found that incredible book and I'm still reading it. It's, it's really wonderful. So if anyone's interested in that. That's great. We'll, we'll make sure we, we sync up all those links in the show notes for our listeners out there. I'll have to check out that Stuff You Should Know podcast. That sounds like a lot of fun. It's amazing. It's funny. <laughs> all right, Paula. We, we, every Hero episode, we like to have a lightning round. So if you're willing to play, we'll jump in. I'm just going to fire off a bunch of random questions. You just hit, hit um, back with your answers. Okay. Top all of right. mind, right? <laughs> That's right. Now, you since you are, a, a, you've already said that cooking is your is your passion. So what is your favorite food? Oh my God, this is embarrassing, but it's French fries. Okay. I'm sorry. Not, you know, it's so uh, what's, French fries for sure. So what's on the fries? Are you traditional ketchup or are you going, you going a different route? Oh no, I uh, truffle aioli for sure. Mm, okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Now what's your uh, favorite adult beverage? Wine. Are you kidding me? I'm Portuguese. Hello. <laughs> wine, wine, wine. <laughs> Any kind of wine, uh, but mainly old world wine. So I'm not big on new world, which would be Australia, New Zealand, and California. I'm more French, Italian, Portuguese wines. Okay. I love very much. Very yeah. good. Very good. Do you, is there a particular type that you like that stands out? If you had to pick one, was it? Was it what are you going? A Sangiovese. Uh, yeah, okay. that's the grape. That's I, I always, it's, I'm a magnet for a nice big, or a Barolo. Um, yeah. Okay. So. All right. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. So now next question, what's on your nightstand right now? Uh, my iPad, uh, and about five books you know? <laughs> and lots of magazines. Uh, the Atlantic is, uh, one of my favorite magazines and I read it. Cause I think it's like just an amazing magazine. So I've got three or four issues of that and I'm, you need to catch up on. So, uh, so yeah, that's, what's on my nightstand, Very but my cool. iPad is yes, definitely. That's your go-to. I hear you. Mm -hmm. Now what's your, mm -hmm. okay. Stick on the, on your iPad. What's the favorite app on that iPad? Okay. I've like, I've become a TikTok junkie and oh. I find it so like, I could get stuck on TikTok for like an hour. It's like, oh my God, an hour just went by and I was just watching these random videos. I think it's hilarious. But you could see, my, and I know everyone has different feeds depending on their preferences. Mm -hmm. So I would say that 90% of my feeds are all food. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so you're oh, getting a lot yeah. of inspiration through your TikTok feed. I see. What's oh, yeah, okay. for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. What's, what's your all time favorite movie? Oh my God. I, oh, I would say it has got to be, um, my brain is dead. Uh, all time favorite movie. And I can't like, all of a sudden I just had a brain fog. I have so many, but I love all the Godfather series, okay. like every single one, one, two, and three, like the classic mafia sort of movies are, are really you know, great. Or Love Actually, that's a, a good, you know, fun one for Christmas. But I would say, yeah, I, I, I'm i a big movie junkie. All right. So what's a, what's a guilty pleasure you have? Fries. Fries. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Should have known. Fries and wine. <laughs> Together. What? That sounds great. So what's the, what's the greatest place you've ever been? Oh, this is an easy one. And I go every year. Uh, Italy. So nice. favorite country, favorite place, the Amalfi Coast. Absolutely. I love, love Italy. And I think okay. everyone has to see Italy at least once in their lives because it's such a beautiful country. Love it. Love it. Last, last, last question of lightning around, Paula. Uh, dogs or cats? Dogs. <laughs> dogs. All right. Any particular kind? I have two. Uh, I like all dogs, uh, but I have two small dogs and uh, one is a... Uh, a Maltese Shih Tzu mix, and the other one is a Shih Tzu. But I love big dogs, small. I've had big, small. I love all dogs. I love, love dogs. Yeah. All right. Well, there's only one right answer, and you got it right. So <laughs> you, you survived the lightning round. <laughs> Thank you. 
this, this has been a lot of fun, Paula, getting to know you. And again, we call it Eco That's Why. We always wrap up with the why. So if somebody wants to come up to you, Paula, and just want to know what your personal why is, because, what are you going to tell them? Oh, this is, I love that question. Be, and the, my why is because I think I can. And uh, oh. that's my why. I love it. I love it. Well, Paula, thank you so much for taking time with us on Eco Ask Why today. It's been a, it's been a pleasure getting to know you. You're doing wonderful things at Verde Group. I know you guys will just keep growing in the future. So thank you again for sharing so much. Thank you, Chris. You've been so much fun. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You have a great day. That was a fun conversation with Paula Courtney. Tell you what, when we got connected, you know, she she was so passionate about the customer experience. I said, look, we need to share your story as well. And the, the entrepreneurial journey that she's been on, phenomenal. Wonderful things she shared. Loved how she talked about taking risk. You have to take risk and you need to get out your comfort zone. So again, wonderful. Thank you so much, Paula, for, for, for what she shared with us. Hope you all enjoyed and you learned something from her. Now, keep the war stories coming in. We want the good, the bad, the, maybe the funny. That, that works as well. Go to the link in the show notes. You can connect with us directly right there and send those in. You can send an audio. You can send an email. If you want us to give you a call and just talk about it, we can do that too. Whatever makes it easiest for you. We just want to get the stories so that we can share them because we just have a passion for industry. Now, if you're liking Eco, that's why. Share it with someone. Please send a text message, an email, whatever you need to do. Give us a shout out on social media. We'll hit you back, I promise. You can find all those links in the show notes. I hope everyone's enjoying Eco Ask Why. Give us a rating and review. And remember, keep asking why.